From this moment on, you will now be known as Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh ha ha! Welcome, brother Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh ha ha! Enough with the Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh, bop. What's up, everybody? This is D giving you the update. Sunday swim. Yo, what's up, everybody? I've been spreading a lot of love for my freshwater people, but I'm back to the frag tank with some updates for my saltwater people. And I'm going to give you the shout out on some of the problems and give you the update on how I fixed them. Now, if you've been watching, you will know that over the last couple of uh, videos, there was issues with algae that had taken over. I remedied that problem. If you want to recap on that, you can go back to those uh, Sunday swims, algae problems, or almost tank crash, and I'll give you an update on that. I'm going to let you know one thing. Nothing worth having happens quickly. Things that go wrong happen fast. Just keep that under your hat, and I'll start with a close-up on some things right now. Now, right here, look how clean this is. The algae is gone. The hair algae has gone down. Now, the only way you're really going to address algae problems is removing the source of the algae, which I did. Did some water changes. I checked my levels. I made sure my RO water was in good shape. It is actually time to change my RO filter because the you can tell when you need to change your RO filter because the pressure... If you have a good RODI system, you'll notice that the pressure will drop. And the pressure will always drop when your filters need to be changed. So my pressure's dropped. I know it's time for my filters to be changed. But because I have the uh, <clears throat> RODI hooked up to the levels which tell me what the uh, sediment levels are in the water, I still know that I'm getting good quality water off the RO system. But I do know that payday comes, I got to order some new membranes and so forth. But water changes will eliminate the nuisance cyano causing nutrients in the water column. And that will aid in removing any unwanted algae. And I'm cleaning the glass and I just noticed I missed a spot. So boom, boom. The other thing is routinely cleaning your glass. I'm going to tell you why. You can't see them right here. I'm going to raise my camera up so you can see it. I have the return pump, which is right here, hooked up to my swivel head. But if you have pumps, wave makers, circulation pumps, whatever you have, blowing towards the glass and you have algae on the glass, guess what? The same way you grow coralline algae, you'll grow nuisance algae. So keep your glass clean keep any areas which are in the way of moving water clean of algae and that will prevent the spread of algae um so enough about the algae because i think we give algae way too much attention and algae is not always a bad thing um one thing that i want to mention is when you have your cleanup crew you add them to the tank in order to rid the tank of algae. And guess what? When the algae is gone, your cleanup crew still has to eat. So I've been making sure that my turbos have been getting fed correctly. And what I did is I made a algae clip just for them. Cheap, just a piece of PVC. I took the PVC, I attached it to some fishing line. I got a little uh, clothespin from the dollar store, and this way I drop this in the tank. I get a piece of nori or seaweed. I drop it in the tank right here, and the snails will find it, believe me. You can drop it all the way down to the bottom. Also, I found out my sea urchin has to eat. You got to keep these guys fed. Just because you put them in there to clean the tank doesn't mean that they run on batteries. They have to eat. And sometimes they don't always just eat algae. They need a balanced diet. So you have to make sure that they're fed. So in keeping a clean tank, these are things that you have to keep track of. Now let's go in for a close-up here because I want to show you something. Now you'll notice my coral has been moved. <laughs> Now my candy cane was moved because I came home one day and it was literally laying on the floor. So this tank is very small. 
my fish I have a tang in here I call tang in here and the only reason he's in here now is because I'm going to upgrade this tank to the cube and I says okay he can get accustomed to the fish that are in here until I get him into the cube but tangs swim a lot tangs in nature swim hundreds of miles a day they swim in schools they swim large distances this guy tends to swim around this rock let me back off when he's bored he'll swim around this rock and around the tank and swim around the rock and he must have banged into this and literally broke it off <laughs> it was wedged in here and glued in broke it off and that candy cane was laying on the floor then I picked it up I actually cut the candy cane when I was picking it up with the uh, with my tweezers and I long story short I had to move it over here so part of keeping the tank is keeping in mind that fish do need space to swim and you have to provide that for them or they will hurt themselves on rock sharp edges or anything else in the tank now one thing I am happy with it can be a nuisance but it is good but uh, anyway my Pacillopora is recovering nicely you can see the tissue if I can focus the tissue is regrowing over the dead areas thank you camera for focusing it is growing over the dead areas and the same thing with this piece that uh, is over here in that near tank crash the Pacillopora and the uh, stony corals take the biggest hit and these are growing back very nicely so I'm very happy about that um, if we move down here the Pavona remember where it was encrusting on that rock well guess what it is encrusting and growing laterally so I'm getting a lot of good growth on that uh, on a negative side you guys if you saw my earlier video I had like a zillion pieces of uh, chalice coral from buddy Steve from the aquarium club gave me a bunch of pieces that he got from one of his clients tanks because they're constantly overgrowing his tank I broke it up into a, a zillion pieces not intentionally but <laughs> it did end up breaking and uh, they are coloring up beautifully I did increase the white light on my uh arctic leds i increased the white level which i usually don't do but uh, i was getting tired of so much intense blue in the tank and the chalices are really liking that uh even i got some pallies which are really opening up and showing some better colors i am more in the green spectrum which i really don't like to be all the time but the zoas are really highly intense in the green spectrum and you could probably attribute that to a the amount of calcium in the water and b the spectrum of light so i may change these lights and use my t5s that i have stored away somewhere but on the other hand the chalices are really rebounded if you look at the last video you can see the tissue is really greatly improved if you look right there in that space there you can see that it's really dense it just people that have kept them or have seen really good specimens can tell the texture is improved same thing with the pavona when they have the extension of the uh, sweeping tentacles just waving nicely it looks great so the tanks recouping and doing really well um, I'm still playing around with what I'm going to do with that cube because part of me wants to drill it part of me just wants to put a hang on the back filter on it and keep the uh, the fry in like a 10 gallon tank I'm debating whether I actually want to hard plumb these two systems together because it's really not necessary given the size of the tank it's only a 50 gallon a 45 gallon cube I think it's 50 or 45 gallon cube and this tank is really simple you guys know this tank I ran KISS style which is stands for keep it simple stupid as reef octopus nano skimmer uh, let me take this off so you can see filter floss which I buy by the super roll if you look in the corner you see I got rolls and rolls of filter floss you can get them from a hobby store pure filter polycarbon uh, polyfiber filter floss for about five to ten bucks for like five to six yards so you know how long that lasts 
run all the tanks on that and the beautiful thing about filter floors versus socks is you can take this piece which is only about four to five inches throw it in there when it gets dirty you toss it in the garbage you cut another piece and you throw it in there and you're good to go save yourself hard labor the easier a job is to do the more likely you will do the job so i keep this tank really clean whereas my tank upstairs the 125 i have to clean i have to pick a day and clean it but it it, it does well i just don't keep certain corals that do well in this tank in that tank because a it's in my dining room which is relatively hotter than the basement so certain corals do not respond well to heat if your tank is going to get 80 degrees i'm sorry i'm talking low but uh allergies oh man allergies are killing me but anyway if your tank is going to hit that 81 degree mark 80 is usually tolerable but when it hits that 81 or 82 mark certain corals are not going to respond well even these chalices um let me zoom over here this piece in the back if i can get a nice shot i had it upstairs in the 125 it was looking like crap i brought it back down here and you can see polyp extension already looking 10 times better than it did upstairs so that is going to be a nice piece like like this it has grown by leaps and bounds all of the dead tissue is actually just about regrown with the exception of this one spot so tune into future videos and you'll see that one little white spot heal over and uh it's just a testament of patience man i see a lot of people you know um I'm a simple person. I know what my limitations are. I know what makes sense for me. And what makes sense for me doesn't always make sense for everybody else because I know what I'm going to do and what I'm not going to do. So I always keep things as simple as possible. Uh, what I am going to do and I haven't done yet is uh, drill or decide whether or not I'm going to put the cube here because this area, when I take a step back, is nice and small it houses this really nicely it houses my fry tanks really nicely but what i'm going to do is put the cube here the cube is only 20 inches in length where this one is 30 so the cube will probably go here and go up about i think it's about 30 inches tall yeah it's about 30 inches tall by 20 inches wide <clears throat> 20 inches deep then I'm going to have the this tank. I may reuse this tank. This is why I haven't done it yet. Because I'm debating whether I want to reuse this tank. Which is already pretty much set up. Or whether I just want to get a 10 gallon tank. And plummet directly to that. And put my fry in there. And just kind of plummet together. Where I can put the skimmer in. I'll make a little chamber the way I did here. I'll make a little chamber in a 10 gallon to put the skimmer filter pads and everything in and connect the two systems so i'm still playing with that whether i'm going to use this tank or that tank but tune in and find out how we uh play out with that <clears throat> if you got a comment if you got opinion leave it down below let me know what you think maybe you guys will help me decide and uh that's about it so i'm still playing with how i'm going to set up the new system and pull this out and i need i need time to do all that so once again I love you guys for subscribing and keeping me inspired to do what I do. Uh, one person asked me, hey, Dave, you're doing this for years and years and you don't have 10,000 subscribers. Guess what? It is no big deal to me. I never did this with the intention of making a million dollars or making a zillions of subscribers. I just do it because I like to do it. I like to help people. I like to show them that it's easier to do. Don't be intimidated. Just do it. Try it. And with that being said. I'm going to end this on the update on the fly that I brought from outside. They're doing good. They're happy. They're chilling. They're showing some colors. And uh, I got my salt water mollies over here. I got my pond mollies over here. These guys are looking good. And click that subscribe button for updates, everybody. So until next time, this is D signing out. Love, peace, and hair grease. Keeping my sanity by keeping my aquariums. Loving the fish fish feeling the love and that's out i'm out see you when i see you everybody see you
And by the way, thank you YouTube for getting rid of YouTube editor. What a pain in the ass it is to edit now. Thanks for nothing YouTube. See ya. I'm out.